instead of solving for the x and y coordinates, as we did in the rectilinear motion, in normal and tangential coordinates, we solve for the summation of forces in the tangential and normal directions, where the free body diagram includes the summation of forces in both directions, and the kinetic diagram includes the kinetic forces MA tangential and MA normal. So when we write Newton's second law, always make sure that the positive of the equation is the positive of the acceleration. So AT here is positive to the right, which is the positive of the equation, and same for AN, it is always positive towards the center of the curvature. In some situations, the question will give you a hint about the contact between let's say for example the block and the surface here so you will read something like without losing contact or before it loses contact or sometimes it can be written this way without leaving the road without leaving the track and they all have the same meaning it means that the normal in this case is equal to zero. So just as an example, let's say that the question is asking you, what is the maximum velocity of the block at point A such that it does not leave the track or the road, or it does not lose contact with the surface? All those have the same meaning. We have to apply the summation of forces in the normal direction. And if you can see here, we have mg, and we take n is equal to zero because the block is barely in contact with the surface. And by doing this, we have mg is equal to m v square over rho, and we can solve for the velocity in this case. It is just a function of rho and the gravity. In some other situations, you might have an object that is moving in a circular motion and theta is specified or theta is wanted from some reference position. For example here, this block was at point A when theta is equal to zero and now it's at this position after some theta. And by looking at the free body diagram, we have the tangential and normal components. We have mg here and we have the normal force in the normal direction. And what is important here is when you solve for the summation of forces and the tangential coordinate, which is equal to mat, you can see that you have mg cosine theta positive in the tangential direction is equal to mat. And if you pick out m from both sides, you'll find out that at is equal to g cosine theta. And if you want to solve for the velocity, for example, then you cannot use constant acceleration equations here because at is function of theta. So if at is function of theta, it means that at is also function of s, where we can use v dv equals a ds. And by integrating both sides and considering ds to be equal to r d theta, we can solve for any variable that the question is asking for. So as long as the initial conditions are given, it's either that the question tells you find the velocity at such theta, so theta is given and you need to find the velocity, or vice versa. When the velocity is equal to something, the velocity is given, what is the value of theta? So it's either this way or the other way. It's only two variables. One of them will be given and the other one you will find from this integration.